Well, now to our THP 11 morning original stories you won't see anywhere else. This morning, we're taking you where few in the public have ever gone before, inside the walls of Arkansas Nuclear One near Russellville. As a part of Arkansas Nuclear Science Week, our very own scientist Scott Cover was granted exclusive access to see what it's like to be in a nuclear engineer for a day. Wow. All right. Now, they didn't let you go inside the actual control room, right? Like, right? Thankfully, no. <laughs> but because safety is so important, the simulators are exact re replicas. I mean, okay. down to the smallest of details. And so that's actually what I was able to go into. And as we've learned, well, people who have worked there for years, no matter what, they never stop training. Uh, and so I got to be a part of a little bit of that training the last couple of days. Behind these gates, one of Arkansas's most secure sites, and it's also one of the most important. For more than 40 years, it's been providing power to hundreds of thousands of customers all across the natural state. As a kid driving along Interstate 40, I used to think this was just a big cloud machine. It's all many kids think, but thankfully it's something much more important. It's Arkansas Nuclear One, the site of the state's only nuclear reactors. And this week being Arkansas Nuclear Science Week, we're diving in on the importance nuclear power plays here in Arkansas, as well as how the folks at Energy are not only keeping themselves, but our community safe. Our first stop, the simulator for Unit 2. It's the newest nuclear reactor, which came online in 1980. It's basically an exact copy of the Unit 2 control room, even down to paintings on the wall, markings, doors, things that are on the wall, and in the control board. We're training them for their worst case scenario to allow them to operate and practice the events that could happen in the plant, so they will be prepared. Hopefully, we do things far worse than they'll ever see in the plant. Even seasoned operators are required to come back to the simulator for not just training, but exams as well. So every five weeks they get tested, they have to pass, or they can't go back to the plant. It looks like a movie set with thousands of lights, buttons, and switches. And there's not just one of these simulators, there's actually two. This is the control room simulator for Unit 1, which went online in 1974. They're similar, but with one major difference. The iconic 447 foot cooling tower is unique to just one of the reactors. It's actually unit two. Okay. On unit two, we use a cooling tower uh, for our cooling the water that goes through the turbine. And on unit one, we use Lake Dardanelle. Uh, the reason for the difference is that uh, we want to make sure we don't put too much heat into uh, Lake Dardanelle. The employees here not only believe in nuclear power, they see its future as a clean energy source. The benefits of nuclear power are that our generation does not emit any greenhouse gases. There's no carbon emission, there's no uh, pollutants uh, released to the environment, so it is a very clean form of energy uh, generation. Arkansas Nuclear One is designed to continuously run for 18 months. Then the plant shuts down. It's known as an outage for about a month to replace the uranium fuel in the reactor. It's an operation that more than doubles the population at the plant. It's a big undertaking. So in addition to the 1,100 plus uh, permanent employees here at ANO, we, br we are bringing in about 1,300 additional contractors. Intergy says Arkansas Nuclear One generates about 82% of the power used in the state. And with great power, comes great responsibility. We understand the potential risk that they are and we take that responsibility seriously. I have no problem having my family, my wife and my children live within the local community. And Scott, you actually brought us something back from the power plant. Yeah, so they, they talk about it being a clean source of energy, and uh, that's a really difficult concept for me to understand until they showed me uh, this right here. This is the actual size of one of the pellets of uranium, and you think, wow, that's it's really like not big at all. Thumb, yeah, yeah exactly. And that actually equates to about 1,800 pounds of coal, uh, 149 gallons of oil, or potentially 17,000 um, uh, cubic feet of natural gas. And so it can do a lot with just a little bit. Wow. Well, we'll hear some more about your yeah. trip to the nuclear power plant and your interesting access that they gave you. Interesting indeed. I gear up in a hazmat suit coming up. It's oh. a lot of fun. Mind blown. Can't wait for that. <laughs> well, now let's get to part two of our THV 11 morning original. These are stories you won't see anywhere else. Today, Scott is taking us inside a place that few of us ever get to see, Arkansas Nuclear One near Russellville. 
And fortunately, he did not shut down the plant. Woo. All right, earlier in the hour, Scott showed us the simulation rooms designed to look exactly like the real control rooms. And now he is strapping on a hazmat suit to avoid nuclear contamination. We'll need that. <laughs> you definitely need it. The folks at Arkansas Nuclear One, they literally train for every possible scenario that you can imagine. Uh, but where they were ready for the morning weather man, were they? I'm not sure. So let's find out. So you'd be fully dressed out in anti-contamination clothing. So that, that clothing actually prevents you from getting contaminated um, when you're walking through our containment building, our radiologically controlled areas. I'm gonna guide you through how to get dressed up because it's real important if you don't do it correctly that um, when you're getting undressed, it's gonna be a problem. Okay, okay so it's real important to follow um, certain ways to get dressed. This area over here, we have a simulated worker. He's an uh, INC worker, and he's actually doing some work on a level transmitter. So we normally ask people, hey, what do you see wrong with this? Some, some things are obvious. I'm gonna see if you can get one thing. If you can, you win. There's a hole in it. There's a hole right there. So that hole right there, if you saw this worker, you'd wanna tell him, hey, you've got a hole in your contam any contamination pool that you need to get out, right? So these are the kind of things that we're looking for, right? He's also sitting on the ground, which he shouldn't be doing because there's contamination all over the ground. Now, the real important part, getting undressed. So the idea is not to touch anything on the outside of your body right now because it potentially has contamination. Now, if that happens... We're all screwed. Just leave it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, Sorry. We, we don't want to pick it up off the ground because now you're cotton liners, you could potentially contaminate your hands, right? right. So we're going to leave it. Remember, you're not touching the outside of your coveralls. That's the idea is not to touch anything that could contaminate your hands right now. All right. Oh, now, okay. Now, now, now we have to stop, right? Correct. So, what just happened? So, if this was real life and you're a student going through this class, what just happened? Uh, what do you think? Well, I just contaminated a different part of the area. Exactly. So, well, who would you call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> you did really well for oh, not really having well. ever. I did really well. You did. Now, I gotta say, I've, I've never seen you nervous in my life. <laughs> you looked a little nervous. So the, these are real life scenarios, <laughs> real life simulations that not only do you train on, uh, but even once you go into the actual control rooms, the actual facilities, you actually get sent back every five weeks. Mm. And so they're designed to make you nervous. Mm. And several times I actually had to pinch myself and say, Scott, calm down. I'm not <laughs> going to cause a nuclear meltdown. No. I'm not going to get radioactive. This is just a simulation. But they want you to feel that pressure mm -hmm. so that when the natural disaster or the man-made mm -hmm. disaster happens, you know what it feels like to have to deal with it in the real situation. I would have a nuclear meltdown. That's what would happen. I, <laughs> that, that is... I, Credit to those folks. I don't know how they do that. Well, so, so many things you have to be thinking about, uh, uh, what not to do. And, and they think about every single one of them, the most unimaginable scenarios. They've got them nailed, they practice them. They have a saying there, they work like they train and they train like they work. Smart. Uh, oh, you could cool. put a blindfold on yourself, walk into either of the rooms, and you're not gonna know which one you're in. Yeah. That's how serious they take it. Uh, so we goofed off, we had fun with the hazmat suit. Let mm -hmm. me tell you, those are some serious folks. Oh. Well, they take it seriously mm -hmm. for good reason. Yeah. And you sure. take the weather seriously for good reason too, because. Uh, we're seeing some changes in the weather.